What's up everybody? In today's video, I will be giving you my top draft steals in each round in the 2024 NFL Draft. These prospects were projected to go higher than their original draft pick in which certain NFL teams got great value with these selections. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So in round one, the draft steal will go to Kenyon Mitchell, pick 22 to the Philadelphia Eagles. He was certainly 1A, 1B to Terrian Arnold, but with Kenyon Mitchell falling to pick 22, this has to be a draft steal for the Philadelphia Eagles. I really thought that Kenyon Mitchell would be a top 15, maybe a top 10 draft pick, but the fact that he fell to pick 22 without the Eagles having to trade up was great, great value. Um, in two straight seasons, he's had back-to-back 91.5-plus -back PFF grades at a position where consistency is really difficult to achieve. He was targeted 132 times over the past two seasons and allowed 54 catches, which is 40.9% completion percentage. His coverage grade remains elite regardless whether he was playing man or zone coverage, but more impressive the man coverage that he was tasked with was typically coming from off man alignment rather than being in position pressing at the line of scrimmage. Mitchell is very battle tested with almost 2,300 snaps of college play under his belt and throw a thousand snaps in coverage. It resulted in six career interceptions and he also had 32 pass breakups to his name, meaning he either intercepted or broke up a pass in 28.8% of passes thrown his way. In 2022, he had a passer rating when targeted of 34.8, and then in 2023, he had a passer rating when targeted of 51.1. He reads receivers and closes in a flash, breaking on the ball in off coverage. He performed really, really well at the Senior Bowl. He did participate, but when he was just doing great against top-tier competition, um, he kind of just backed out. He was kind of like, you know what? I did what I had to do in the Senior Bowl. I'm not going to participate and play any games. I know my first-round pick. I'm done. Like. 32 pass breakups in the past two seasons, great body control to compete for jump balls, and flashes the ability to pluck passes out the air. He is such, such a tremendous draft steal for the Philadelphia Eagles, who have now enhanced their pass defense by selecting Kenyon Mitchell. So draft steal for the Philadelphia Eagles in round one. Now in round two, my draft steal is going to go to the Washington Commanders selecting Jerzon and Newton, defensive tackle out of Illinois. Like I said in round one, that Kenyon Mitchell was 1A, 1B to Terry and Arnold. Jerzon Newton is 1A, 1B to Byron Murphy. Coming into the 2023, 2023 college football season, Jerzon Newton was arguably the number one defensive tackle in this class. Such a disruptive run defender with outstanding instincts and hands. Does a great job reading the ball, locating the ball, slips, gets off blocks, and wraps up tacklers really, really well. Newton is also a physical hand fighter who flashes the ability to win clean, and he is quick to counter when he doesn't win with his first move. He shows elite ability to push the pocket, great anticipation, Keeps his eye on the ball, whether it's a run or a pass play, and can often disengage and get past blockers without even looking at them. I mean, this guy is a baller. Um, I'm very surprised that he fell in the second round. I thought that he was a top 25 pick, um, maybe by him getting hurt and not participating at the NFL Combine, which probably just like tumbled his stock a little bit, but he has tremendous motor. He's someone that all 30 te 32 teams will love to have. And the fact that he fell to the second round, pick 36 to the commanders, that is a draft steal that they potentially got themselves a number one potentially defensive tackle in this draft class. So great, great job for the commanders with this great value of getting Jerzon Newton top defensive tackle in this class. Now in round three, 
the draft steal is going to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting linebacker Peyton Wilson. He has elite sideline to sideline ability who finishes college career with 402 tackles and ran the fastest 40 yard dash out of all linebackers at the combine running a 4.43. He shows tremendous depth in coverage, shows great instincts and breaks on the ball well in coverage. He has traits to match up with tight ends and running backs. He also finishes career with seven interceptions and 20 pass deflections. He also had six sacks in 2023 and has tremendous burst to be a threat rushing after the quarterback. I mean, this guy, top three, maybe top two linebacker in this draft class, definitely, definitely fell with his stock in terms of his age and injury history. But with let's say he did not have any age concerns or did not have any injury concerns. He is probably a fringe first round pick. I mean, if you look at his tape and look at the games he's played in, this guy plays with his head on fire. Does a great job blitzing the quarterback. Does a great job in pass coverage. Um, He's such an elite linebacker. In 2023, he was ranked First, out of all linebackers with 26 coverage stops, um, I think he's someone that's going to see the field early. Um, I know the Pittsburgh Steelers have Patrick Queen, but I can see him just being a great rotational linebacker, maybe starting besides Patrick Queen, um, but I can see him being a rotational um, pass rusher, coverage pass coverage um he can either see a lot of time as a nickel linebacker but this guy is such a stud probably one of the top linebackers in this class and the fact that the Steelers were able to get him in the third round in which he to me is a top 50 prospect such such great value and such a steal for the Pittsburgh Steelers and that will make their defense a lot lot stronger having a linebacker with tremendous sideline ability yes the injury concerns and I get the age but there is no denying that this guy is a baller and the Steelers got themselves a tremendous pick with this deal with Peyton Wilson in the third round now in the fourth round the draft steal is going to go to the Kansas City Chiefs pick 133 selecting Jaden Hicks to me Jaden Hicks was arguably maybe a top five safety in this draft class. He's someone that can line up over the slot and high. But me, I believe he is best playing close to line scrimmage. He's someone that can see spending a lot of time as a nickel linebacker or a strong safety. Very effective matching up against running backs and tight ends and also dropping into underneath zones where he can line up as a linebacker, um, very, very rangy run defender who could fill the gaps and flashes the ability to disrupt plays in the backfield. Great job plucking the ball out of the air and very competitive in 50-50 situations. Such a consistent pre-snap communicator when the offense uses motion and does well to anticipate where the ball is going in zone and roaming coverage roles. Jaden Hicks demonstrates tone setting tackling and with his cornerback background, it gives him a good baseline for slot man coverage assignments. Yes, he does lack long speed and twitch, but this is why I believe he does a great job when plays are happening in front of him in which he has good speed to make plays coming downhill. But talk about the Chiefs getting one of the top draft deals in this draft. I mean, this. Jaden Hicks is easily a top five safety, someone that I thought would not, that would not even make it to the fourth round. I thought that he would get drafted somewhere in the third round. To me, he was probably like a top 80 prospect, um, over 500 snaps as a deep safety, over 600 snaps playing in the box, probably maybe one of the most versatile safeties in this draft class. I mean, when I think about um, versatile safeties. I think of Cooper DeGene. I think of Javon Bollard. Jaden Hicks is up there. Jaden Hicks is up there in terms of being a versatile safety. Um, the Chiefs are going to have a great, great time utilizing him in the secondary, whether it's playing as a safety, maybe having some snaps in the slot, or playing some nickel linebacker, but he will do a great job. I'm not too sure if 
how he fell. I honestly don't don't know how he fell. Maybe he was the, the top speed R, but he's been getting a lot of uh, pro comparisons to Kyle Duggar. I think he plays a lot like Jamal Adams. Loves to have that tone-setting tackling ability. Loves to just pump up the defense. Great communicator. So me, my pro comparison to Jaden Hicks is Jamal Adams. And wow. The Kansas City Chiefs did again as if they need any more steals and great players on their team. But definitely, definitely such a tremendous pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. Round four, top 80 prospects. Good job, Chiefs. Good, good draft steal on getting Jaden Hicks, which I am surprised that he almost made it to the fifth round. Now, talking about the fifth round, the draft steal in round five, pick 155. Going to the Philadelphia Eagles, and that is Jeremiah Trotter Jr. He does not have great size. He is six foot, two hundred and maybe thirty pounds. Coming out of Clemson, doesn't have great size or speed, but he does leave Clemson as one of the only fourteen FBS players to record ten plus sacks, four plus interceptions, three plus forced fumbles, and multiple pick sixes in the past twenty seasons. He does a great job reading quarterbacks, chases with great effort, and he can beat blockers to the point of attack, shifting through traffic between the tackles. I am surprised that Jeremiah Trider Jr. lasted to the fifth round, let alone pick 155. To me, he is probably top six, top five linebacker in this draft. I thought he would have gotten picked maybe in the top 100, um, but Jeremiah Trider Jr., He is a future starting linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Don't let round five fool you thinking that he will be a depth linebacker. He is not. He is going to be a future linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. He is the son of all pro former linebacker Philadelphia Eagles, which his father is Jeremiah Trotter. But Jeremiah Trotter, such, such a great linebacker prospect. I understand he doesn't have great size or great speed, but he has great football IQ, great instincts. And let me throw some numbers at you. And if you were to close your eyes, you'll probably be like, wow, this prospect does not belong in the in the fifth round. So let me, let me throw some numbers at you. Since 2022, the top linebacker prospects in coverage grade, Jeremiah Trier Jr. is number one with a coverage grade of 91.8. Now let's talk about the top linebacker prospects in coverage grade when lined up in the box since 2022. Jeremiah Trier Jr. is ranked third with 89.7 with box coverage grade. Now let's talk about the top linebacker prospects in coverage grade when lined up in the slot since 2022. Trotter Jr. ranked first with 89.9 slot coverage grade and last but not least let's talk about the top linebacker prospects in forced and completion rate since 2022 he is ranked second with 12 and a half percent forced and completion rate in which number one was edrin cooper out of texas a&m with 20 and a half percent forced and completion rate this guy's a stud the numbers that i just told you he is a stud especially since 2022 And when you hear that, that information, you will probably tell yourself he is a third round pick, probably, probably top four, fourth round, third round pick. The fact that Trotter Jr. lasts to the fifth round with those kind of numbers, great football IQ, great intelligence, and a future starting linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Talk about draft steal. Philadelphia Eagles draft steal in the first round, draft steal in the fifth round. Talk about the Eagles being bandits in the 2024 NFL draft. Talk about round six, pick 184 with going to the Miami Dolphins draft steal. Malik Washington, wide receiver. I am surprised and I am shocked that he fell into the sixth round. He is probably one of the most underrated wide receivers in this draft class. There was a lot of a lot of great wide receivers in this draft class. He is top 20 to me. Yes, he's five foot nine, 191 pounds, but he did lead 
FBS and broke the ACC single season record with 110 catches in 2023. He has burst and change of direction to get open when he has a two-way go working out of the slot. He is definitely going to be a slot in the NFL. And just imagine the Dolphins offense having Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, and Malik Washington playing out of the slot. He reaches his top end speed quickly, makes defenders miss, and has contact balance to break tackles after the catch. Now, I'm going to give you some information about Malik Washington, and you're probably going to be surprised as well that he fell into the sixth round. Malik Washington's 2023 receiving stats, and I'm going to give you the FBS ranking as well. In terms of receiving grade, 92.4, which ranks second in FBS. Receptions, 111, first in FBS. Receiving yards, 1,000. 384 receiving yards, second in FBS. Yards after catch, 710, third in FBS. Yards per route run, 3.15, tied for 12, and missed forced tackles with 35, which ranks first in FBS. Now let's talk about non, non-screen receiving grades between 2021 to 2023, and I'm going to read you the list. Number one, Marvin Harrison Jr., 92.2. Number three, Malik Neighbors, 90.6. Number four, number three, Jacob Cohen, 90.1. And number four, Malik Washington, 89.7. Top five non-screen receiving grades between 2021 to 2023 with the first two wide receivers on that list being top six in the 2024 NFL Draft. Malik Washington is such a spectacular route runner who can win at all levels in the NFL. He does a great job making defenders miss, in which he had led the nation with 54 missed missed tackles on non-screen passes since 2021. And for comparison's sake, Malik Neighbors had 35 in that span. Malik Washington had 54 missed tackles Malik Neighbors had 35 since 2021. Malik Washington is such an underrated wide receiver, one of just 14 receivers this past season to post a perfect 99.9 deep receiving grade. I mean, this guy's a baller, very shifty, very quick. He's going to probably explode in this Dolphins in this Dolphins offense. I mean, Tyreek Hill is in his 30s, has a high cap hit the next few years. Jalen Wallet, I believe this might be his last year. Um, but in terms of future, and I'm for those that probably play fantasy football, if you're looking for a deep uh, flyer in the later rounds for a receiver, this is a name to look out for. Malik Washington, draft steal in round six, going to the Miami Dolphins. Now, last but not least, we're talking about round seven. Pick 225. Draft steal going to the Los Angeles Chargers, Brendan Rice, wide receiver. Brendan Rice ranks third in the Pac-12 in average yards per catch with 17.6 and fourth in the Pac-12 in touchdown catchage with 12. Does a great job sticking his foot in the ground and making crisp breaks on top of his route. Has good size, 6'2", 208 pounds, great ability to separate with his strength. Great job tracking the deep ball well and has enough speed to be a threat vertically as well as having good body control to win back shoulder throws. Um, He is going to be joining a thin receiving core in Los Angeles. He's going to have a clear opportunity to contribute in a rotational role in year one before he could probably get a full-time role, which probably next year or if injuries were to occur. occur. Um, Brendan Rice was Caleb Williams' favorite target and racked up 16 receiving yards over the past two seasons, and he has a passer rating of 117.3 when targeted since 2022, which ranks ninth among all college receivers in that time. Brendan Rice is probably a top 15 receiver in this class, so the fact that Malik Washington was top 20 and got drafted in round six, Brendan Rice is top 15 and got drafted in seventh. That is a draft steal in which I thought Brendan Rice would be 
drafted maybe mid fourth round, but he did a great job being a go-to target for Caleb Williams when he was in the pocket or running out of the pocket. Um, I believe that Brennan Rice and McConkey will be a great youth duo for the Chargers. I understand they have Quentin Johnson there. I know Joshua Palmer is there, but let's talk about the future. I think Rice and McConkey will have will be a great duo for Justin Herbert. Herbert is going to want to sling the ball. Um, we know Harbaugh may want to ground and pound. He loves to round the ball, but at the end of the day, you have Herbert. Herbert's going to want to sling the ball around, and I think Rice is going to be a great rotational piece for the Chargers. Um, great size, six foot two, 208 pounds. I think he's someone that we're going to hear here and there, but once the injuries start to occur, if they do occur in the Los Angeles receiving core, Rice will be a great plug-and-play option. And the fact that he lasted to the seventh round, in which I believe he should be ranked higher than Malik Washington, that in itself is a draft still for Los Angeles Chargers. But there you have it. These are my top draft steals in each round in the 2024 NFL Draft. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I do make football content weekly. I drop videos every Mondays and Friday. But overall, thank you so much for watching and catch you next time.